Hi, it's Adrian. In this video, we're going to look into items, shops and crafting stations. By the end of this video, you should be able to create your own items and define recipes for crafting as well as putting them for sale in stores. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing we want to do is create a new folder under our project folder. So let's go there, right click, create folder, and we're going to call it items. So the first thing you have to know is that there are two types of items in Mithril 2D. So we can go over create, Mithril 2D, and items. The first one is item. It's the base for any item inside of your game. And the other one is equipment. So let's start by creating an item. When you create an item, you can give it a name. So let's call it potion. And then you can see in the inspector, you have a few settings. First, you can choose which category this item belongs to. This is mostly useful to split your items inside of the inventory, except that if you put an item in the key category, it won't be sellable. Now let's select an icon for our new item. So there are a few bottles already included with Mithril 2D, so you can use one of these. Let's try to use this one. Then you can write a display name, so let's call it Potion, and a description. A super cool potion. You can then set the base price for this item. This is going to affect how much the item is listed in stores, but it's also going to affect how much your player can get when selling this item. Then after you set the price, you can decide what happens when you click on this item from the inventory. So you have a few different options here. Feel free to explore them and experiment with them. So for this potion, we're simply going to heal the player. So we're going to select item heal effect. Then we can expand this structure and there we're going to find a few other options. First, we can decide whether or not this item should be consumed after being used. If you don't check that, then the item will stay in the inventory after being used. We want this item to be consumed, so let's check it. Then you can choose which audio to play when this item is consumed. We already have a sound for it in the demo, so let's use the use item sound. And then you can choose how much health you want to restore. Let's set it to 5. Now if I want to test this item, I can simply add it to the player through the save file. So let's go over to the save file, custom hero, and inventory, and let's hit the plus button right here. Now I can select our new item, potion. Now let's hit play. If I open my inventory, I can see that I have this new item inside. If I click on it, this item has no effect. This is because this effect doesn't get applied if our health is already full. Let's try to lose some health. All right, now that should work. Items, potion, and you can see that I recovered four health. This is because my health was at 1, so I recovered 4 to go back to 5. Now let's create a store and put this item for sale. So let's go back to our folder, items, right click, create, and we're going to select Mithril 2D, shops, and shop. Let's call it shop underscore Yosbar. We're going to assign this store to our friend here. So let's click on him. Let's go to its interaction list and we're going to replace the content of the shop interaction from shop blacksmith. That is the one used in the demo game. We're going to replace it by shop Yosbar, which is the one we just created. So now if we interact with Yosbar, our shop is going to show up. Let's click on the shop and let's define items to add to the store. So let's add our potion. Here we go. And then you can decide what is going to be the selling price multiplier. For instance, if the potion is worth 50 gold and the selling price multiplier is 0 0.5, then the item will grant the player 25 gold when sold. Buying price multiplier, well, it just multiplies the price that you set in the item. So let's try that out.
Now you can see that the shop is showing up with the potion for sale. I can buy two of these. And I can also sell them for 25 gold. Now let's look at some items that are already included with the demo game. You can see a bunch of these items are resources like the bone, the bucket, or the slime bowl. So what we're going to do is that we're going to create a new recipe that uses a bone and a slime bowl. So to do that, we're going to go back to our folder, items, right click, create, Mithril 2D, crafting, and recipe. We're going to call it recipe underscore potion. There we can determine the crafting fee. Let's set it to five. And we can also override the name. If we don't override it, then the item name is going to be used. Overriding the name can be useful if you want to craft, let's say, a set of potion. You can also override the icon. Maybe you have an icon that shows multiple potions. This is especially useful if the quantity is superior to one. Now let's select the item. We're going to craft potion. So let's select potion. And then we can select ingredients. You can also add additional output if you want your recipe to craft multiple items. So the first element we're going to add is the bone. One bone. The second one is going to be the slime bowl. Also one. Now we can edit our save file to add both of these items to the player's inventory. So we're going to go to save file, custom hero. And we're going to hit plus. We're going to add one bone. And we're also going to add a slime ball. And I'm also going to remove the potion from there. Now, if we want our player to be able to craft, we need to create a crafting station. By default, there is a crafting station that is available from anywhere in the game. It is called the on the go crafting station. If I hit play and I open the inventory. I can see this icon, Craft, that shows a bunch of options. The on-the-go crafting station is defined in the game config. You can go to game config, click on CFG underscore game, and change which crafting station should be used as a default right here. So for this demonstration, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new crafting station and assign it to an entity in the world. Let's use the sign. So first, what we want to do is create the actual crafting station. So let's go back to items, right click, create, Mithril 2D, crafting, crafting station. Let's call it test. Very inspired. Now we can assign it to the sign. So let's click on the sign. We're going to update the command trigger to trigger a crafting station interaction. So let's click on to execute. And let's select open craft menu. There we need to reference the crafting station. So let's just drag and drop the crafting station there. Now we need to add recipes to this crafting station. So let's go to recipes, add an entry and select the recipe for potion that we created. You can also determine a price multiplier and a flat price. This is if you want to add some extra cost to the crafting with this specific crafting station. So now let's hit play and let's navigate to the sign. I click on it. It opens the crafting station. I can see that there is a potion available and there is a check mark. It means that I can craft it. You can see here that all the requirements are met. So if I click on it, I successfully craft the potion. It gets into my inventory and I lose the ingredients. You can also see that I lost five gold to cover the crafting fee. Last, I want to show you equipment. So let's create some piece of gear. Let's right click, hit create, Mithril 2D, items, equipment. Let's call it item underscore leather underscore boots. Let's set the category to gear and let's select an icon. We're going to use this one. Now the display name is going to be leather boots. Description is going to be some cool boots and the price we're going to leave it at 50. 
Now we want to change the equipment type from weapon to feet. Also, we want to set unuse to item equip or unequip. This item effect is only applicable to equipment. If you try to use it with a regular item, it won't work. Now we can set the bonus stats for this item. So let's add 5 agility. You can also add negative stats if you want, like minus 2 health. The visual override setting lets you set a sprite library asset that you can then retrieve inside of your code. This can be useful if you want to update the visuals of your character based on the equipment. Then you can set a bonus ability. Let's try to add one. If the boots are equipped, we want the dash ability to be made available. Now let's add these boots to the store. So we click on shop EOS bar, we add an item, and we select our boots. Now let's hit play. Let's go over to US bar, shop, and I can see leather boots. Let's buy them. All right, they are in my inventory now. I can also see the auto-generated description for the item. It says minus two health and plus five agility. Now let's open my inventory and equip these boots. I need to navigate to the gear category and click on the boots. You can see an ability got added. It's the dash ability. My agility and my health also got adjusted. Now you can see that I have this new ability that I can use. One thing to note is that if you want an item to be not sellable, you can set its price to zero or set its category to key. Both of these will work. I'd like to also add a note on the way that interactions work for shops and for crafting stations. So let's click on Yos Bar. You can see that Yos Bar has a shop interaction that is going to open the shop Yos Bar that we created. You can also see that there is a dialogue sequence associated with it. Now if we click on this dialogue sequence, you're going to see that it has two options, accept and decline. So similarly to Quest that we've seen in the previous tutorial, this dialogue sequence is supposed to send the message accept or decline. This is what the interaction is expecting from this dialogue sequence, so it can open or not open the shop. It works exactly the same way for crafting stations. If I set craft interaction, I can see that it also requires a dialogue and it takes a crafting station. You always need to make sure that your dialogue is gonna send the accept and decline messages. Otherwise, your player won't have any way to open this crafting station or shop. But of course, if you don't want to use interactions, you can always use commands to open a store or open a craft menu as we did with the sign. And that is it for the items, crafting and shops tutorial. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you for the next tutorial. Cheers.